नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर टूडेज डिस्कशन इज अबाउट अ सैड न्यूज फॉर द एंटायर कंट्री इंडिया हैज लॉस्ट अ ग्रेट सन अ ग्रेट साइंटिस्ट अ ग्रेट इनोवेटर अ ग्रेट रिसर्चर अ ग्रेट लीडर अ ग्रेट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर एंड अ ग्रेट सोल Recently, M. S. Swaminathan, renowned scientist known for his contribution towards green revolution in India, has passed away. In this discussion, we will understand about contribution of this great soul towards India's development. I would say this discussion is not just about UPSC civil services preparation, but this discussion is a tribute to M. S. Swaminathan. As you know, M. S. Swaminathan, who is hailed as the father of green revolution in India, he passed away recently. He was ninety-eight. he was instrumental in developing high yielding variety wheat and rice in india and he was instrumental in bringing green revolution in our country so let's get to know more about this great soul ms swaminathan manikumbu sambasiman swaminathan was born in kumbakonam in madras his father mk sambasivan was a surgeon his father sambasivan was highly inspired by mahatma gandhi he had participated in non cooperation movement later on in civil disobedience movement as well so we can say that gandhian influence was there on ms swaminathan's father as well as him but ms lost his father sambasivan at a very early age of 11 years he was taken care of by his father's brother he completed his early education in madras itself later on he graduated from zoology from maharaja college in trivandrum He later on secured a bachelor's degree in agriculture sciences from Madras Agricultural College. Now, after finishing his PG from Madras Agricultural College, a very interesting snippet is that he is connected with UPSC Civil Services. We are all preparing for UPSC Civil Services examination, isn't it? So, if you if you see M. S. Swaminathan's life after completing his PG in agricultural research, he was working at IARI. Later on, he cleared UPSC examination. he cleared upsc civil service examination he was selected as ips but he did not join the services he later on went to netherland he chose to work at the wageningen agricultural university in netherlands where he started to work on potato genetics now potato genetics was a very upcoming field at that time because during the world war 2 what had happened was on potatoes there was a lot of infestation of different insects and other pests so swami nathan started to work towards this pest resistance for potatoes later on he gained his phd from the cambridge university he also completed his pd of the post doctoral uh, degree from the wisconsin university and he returned to india in 1954 and started to work with the iari indian agriculture research institute where he completed his post graduation from 1972 to 79 he was the director general of indian council for agricultural research that means he had he had experience of being into research he was a innovator he was a researcher he was a scientist he was also an administrator he was director general at icar he also had experience of being a bureaucrat in 1979 ms swaminathan was made principal secretary of the agriculture ministry where he took up his role towards green revolution the very next year in 1980 he was also made a member of planning commission he served on the planning commission he was in charge of agricultural and rural development in india from 1980 to 1982 a multifaceted personality now as i told you he is known as the father of indian green revolution in our country but at the global level we all know that the green revolution and its contribution is is bestowed on norman borlaug M S Swaminathan worked very closely with Norman Borlaug. Borlaug is considered as father of green revolution at the global level, and M S Swaminathan is considered the father of green revolution in India. I would say in the Asian continent itself, Borlaug and Swaminathan have collaborated, have worked very closely. In fact, when Norman Borlaug got Nobel Prize in 1970 for his work on agricultural sciences, he he had written a letter to Swaminathan citing. his contribution towards work on the mexican dwarf that is mexican wheat varieties and the rice variety right so great great acknowledgement there from borlaug towards ms swaminathan in fact ms swaminathan 
during his research days 1950s and 1960s he was working on the hexaploid wheat variety later on he worked very closely with norman borlaug and they developed different varieties high yielding varieties of wheat and rice and both of these they were used towards implementation of the green revolution ms swaminathan after returning to india he worked consistently with indian farmers giving his knowledge training the farmers on how to boost their income he he explained them about the high yielding varieties of wheat what kind of fertilizers are to be used what kind of irrigation is to be used how productivity can be enhanced in india and a lot of contribution of india becoming a net exporter of these food grains from a net importer goes towards this great personality ms swaminathan he worked very closely with prime minister indira gandhi in developing the agricultural programs and policies of the country that time and in fact as i told you he was instrumental in making india self sufficient in food grains if we are able to export wheat today and ironically we have banned the export of wheat but nonetheless few years back yes last year itself we were exporting a lot of wheat this is because of the contribution of great scientists like ms swaminathan Swaminathan has also played role at different international organizations from 1981 to 85 MS was independent chairman of food and agricultural organization from 1984 to 1990 he was also connected with the environmental movement he was the president of IUC an international union for conservation of nature later on he was also president of WWF the world wildlife fund as well now we all upsc aspirants we know about swaminathan because in 2004 he was the chairman he headed the national commission on farmer now this commission was set up in 2004 by the government of india to look into the issue of agrarian distress in our country how to stop farmers suicide in india farmers suicides in our country and some of the contributions of ncf have been extraordinary some of them have been implemented some of them have not been implemented let's look at some of the recommendations in fact the commission headed by ms swaminathan they looked into the issues of agrarian distress in our country and they observed that the agrarian distress has has become or has exacerbated in recent years ms swaminathan had highlighted the major cause of agrarian crisis in our country is because of unfinished agenda of land reforms very very important problem apart from that quantity and quality of water in india technology fatigue in india access access adequacy and timeliness of institutional credit in india is lacking apart from that we all are heavily dependent on the meteorological factors as well so the commission listed out the problems that indian agriculture is facing and they suggested that farmers need to be assured access towards the basic resources that is land so land reforms have to be brought water irrigation facilities bio resources that is biodiversity based resources institutional credit insurance technology and knowledge management so all the aspects have to be covered to ensure that agrarian distress in our country should be reduced many recommendations had also come up from this particular committee one of the important recommendation was agriculture as a subject to be inserted into the concurrent list it has not happened yet but let's wait apart from that they had given a very important recommendation regarding msp the first of all they said that the pds the public distribution system has to be implemented throughout the country apart from that the msp the minimum support price should be at least 50% of the weighted average of cost of production this is called as the ms swaminathan formula for msp and this is seldom seldom used or implemented i would say to large extent now this is these two are the recommendations which have to be implemented in letter and spirit apart from that distribution of ceiling surplus land and the wasteland to landless this has not happened i can say that in india the land reforms is still an unfinished business and it has to be completed which was suggested it was also suggested to prevent the diversion of agricultural land to non agricultural purposes apart from that the swaminathan commission had recommended to establish an agriculture risk fund to a large extent many funds have come different insurance schemes have come so some recommendations have happened apmc reforms were called for this is pending but what was highlighted was to move towards a single market and uh, by creating an enam i think we have moved towards that uh, that is why i told you many of the recommendations of this national commission of farmers have been implemented but many are still basically 
accumulating dust on on the on the government on the government tables i would say so we have to look into these issues and probably in future we might see some implementation regarding this especially regarding agriculture as a concurrent subject and msp all right so a very important commission he was he was chairman of national commission of farmers apart from that after 2004 he had played an active role in indian political setup as well by apj abdul kalam the then indian president he was nominated into rajya sabha and he served in rajya sabha from 2007 to 2013 as a nominated member of rajya sabha so he was member of parliament as well so a great soul and for his contribution he has been recognized as well he has won many prizes swaminathan was first awarded the world food prize in 1987 he has been awarded with padma shri padma bhushan padma vibhushan he has been given the award of hk firodia lal bahadur shastri national award indira gandhi national prize apart from several international awards like raman magasese award he has also won the albert einstein world science award in 1986 in fact the unep united nations environment program has described ms swaminathan as the father of economic ecology a very important title so remember this who is the father of economic ecology according to unep it is ms swaminathan in fact time magazine has highlighted that there are three personalities who have had instrumental impact on india in the 20th century not the 21st century but 20th century and those three personalities are mahatma gandhi rabindranath tagore and the third person is ms swaminathan according to time magazine this is a testimony to the hard work to the dedication of ms swaminathan in multiple fields as i told you as i told you he is he is not just a scientist he is a scientist a great visionary an administrator an innovator a leader a great great soul and may his soul rest in peace but from exam point of view these facts are very important for you for upsc civil service examination mcqs can be created let me end my discussion by giving you a small question for practice say an ethics case study or or an ethics question where i can ask you what are the values what are the values that you can take out from the life of great scientists like ms swaminathan and what values can you incorporate in yourself to become a better civil servant a better individual think about it do attempt it again may his soul rest in peace ms swaminathan a great great soul it's a big loss for india but let's let's hope we keep on his path of of commitment and hard work and improvement of indian agriculture and indian agricultural output let's hope for the best that is it in this particular video thank you for watching this but before going let me tell you about study i use prelims to interview program huge discounts are running are, are running on the learning days for the last 3 days of september just visit our website studyiq.com you will get all the details there in fact you will get a discounted price even below this just use the code rahul life for the next few days till the end of september and join the p2i program it is available in three formats in hindi english and a bilingual format that is english format enroll now i'll see you in the class thank you for watching this video jai hind